Hello and welcome back to the Wendell Effect for the equity markets. This is Brandon Wendell with you. I'm going to go over the sector rotation model and talk a little bit about what might be happening in the equity markets going forward for the next week for April 16th. Uh, before we get started, just need to remind everybody that we are not broker dealers or investment advisors. We're going to take a look at this information, but it's from an educational standpoint only, not telling advice or holding particular securities, giving personalized recommendations. The uh, markets are risky and there's always that uh, possibility of loss. We just try to minimize the risk, but we can't eliminate it. And we're also not subject to trading restrictions, so we can have a position at security to initiate one at any time. If you could, stay in touch with me. If you've got any requests or comments or anything you'd like to look at, please send me an email, brandonwendell.cmt at gmail.com. And you can also follow me on a regular basis on Twitter, at TraderBDub. And please, if you could, hit like and subscribe, as well as maybe the alerts button too to make sure you stay in touch with us and get notified when we bring you this video and others every single week when we can. So we'll go ahead and kick this off, take a look, see what's going on in the markets for the stocks in uh, this, again, this week, April 16th. Kicking off, looking at the last six months, been pretty bullish, as you can see, going into the April 14th on Friday, uh, overall being led by what normally would be a bullish signal you know looking at the sector rotation when you get the technology industrials and materials that's normally the beginning of the bull market and that's what we've been getting over the last six months pretty much showing us that we're likely to continue to go higher even over the last month uh, there's been a little bit of flight to safety as you notice the staples healthcare and utilities had a bit of a boost over the last month but you know over the last week it looks like those are selling off a bit more and therefore it, it appears as though the equity markets are anticipating more bullishness going forward. So expect prices to continue to push upwards overall. Looking at the XLY, the consumer discretionary, this has been a little choppy ever since we bounced off that daily demand at the beginning of the year, we had our run, went off supply, and now just sideways. Although on our bit recent pullback, we couldn't get below 40, that means we may be making another charge up towards that 155 level. But keep an eye out for just above 150, might stall out a little bit there first. On communications, the uh, sector is looking like it's getting ready to roll over again. We ran up into an area of supply. We lost momentum. That's called a negative divergence, where you have prices moving higher, but the momentum is dying. You can't move higher without momentum. So even though this is a tested zone, we're likely to round off and pull back yet again, perhaps retreating to about 56.35. Uh, it's not really great demand there, but that's where we kind of kicked off this bullish pressure, and it's a 38% retracement of the most recent impulse. So I expect that pullback before we can go higher. Eventually, we'll get through supply, but it's got to come down first. Looking at the technology sector, same sort of thing happening here. We rallied up, kind of stalled out and pulled back a little bit, as we're pulling back, we're not pulling back very far and we don't have a lot of bearish momentum. So at some point, we're likely to continue to push upwards towards our next target, basically duplicating the preceding impulse. But it's not this week. <laughs> so I'd expect us to go up a little bit, but not break through this 152 area as of yet. Uh, looking at materials, you can see pretty much same picture. You know, you got that move a little bit deeper in the supply zone. We got a little bit more momentum, but not quite enough to push us through yet. I say that we pull back a little bit first before we go higher. We're definitely not going to go below 80 from what I can see here before we go higher. So look for the buying opportunities on the pullback. For the energy sector, more of the same. Again, we're making those higher highs, but doing it very slowly without a lot of momentum. So while we're not going to fall down very far, we're likely to go a bit more sideways in the energy sector. I don't see as much bullish opportunity here as I did in some of the other uh, ETFs. Looking at consumer staples, that is rounding off as well and getting ready to fall. We couldn't make it into supply. We're building momentum before we could possibly break through, but this sector is going to fall out of favor if the markets continue to be bullish. I would expect a pretty deep retracement, maybe back down towards $72. If uh, the equity markets continue to rally, this is going to go up slightly, but it's not the sector you want to be in. Same thing with healthcare. Again, this is a defensive sector. It does look very bullish, though. You can see how we had that nice move up, both in momentum and price. It might be forming a little bit of harami here. You got the small body candle inside the larger. So it may get a little retracement back down to this candle, which is around 131 before we can go higher. So we'll see. And in utilities, that is also dying off. We have a retracement in, uh, in uh, happening right now, as a matter of fact. You can see, again, 
price has made a higher high, lower high on the indicator, so we are pulling back. We're trying to fight to stay up with bullish candles, but we may still fall down to this demand at about 67.40, maybe even 67 even. So it looks like we're still going to pull back a little bit this week, but that should be a nice bouncing point to take us up to 71. So you can look for that to possibly happen. And in financials, we have a bit of a retracement off the lows, made it almost 50%, but we don't have a lot of bullish momentum. So I think this is just it. It depends on what we do the, on Monday. This candle, if we gap down, it leaves that as kind of a shooting star and pushes prices to the downside. That is, if we gap below the low from Friday right there. So depending on where we open, if we open inside, then we're probably just going to go a bit sideways and just, again, not great uh, long-term trading, but better for day trading intraday in the sector. But if we can gap above or move above, then we might even be able to continue up to $34 on the sector. But what I'm anticipating and seeing right now is most likely we gap down below the prior day's low, which is Friday's low, and that makes this a shooting star, which is very, very bearish, or an evening star, whatever you want to call it, and we should see prices continue to move down. Finally, real estate already moving down as well. It did retrace quite a bit, but we lost momentum. There's another negative divergence, and you see the result already. This is looking like it wants to shoot down towards 33. So if there's a sector you want to short, it's going to be this one. It looks like it's going to be the most bearish. A couple of trade ideas I'm going to leave you with for this week. We got three of them, I think. Electronic Arts, 90% of the time, we get a pretty good rally, actually, in the beginning of May. It might be a little early, but there's still some opportunity here. The average return for the last 10 years has been almost 12%. So that's a rally from April 17th. Um, what does it say? 13th of April. That's all right. No, it's right here. There it is. 17th of April to 15th of May. So for the next month, we should expect bullishness. And if we can pull back, you know, there may be a great buying opportunity here at demand around 121. So looking for a pullback to buy. We may only pull back to this area, unfortunately. You can see we have kind of rally base and just a slight rally, but Unfortunately, it may only be it on the pullback there. If I go out, let's see if I got a chart here on EA. I'm going to drop down to a 60-minute time frame for a moment. And, yeah, what you see there is, unfortunately, it's not really a great demand zone, but we may just pull back to this area, which we have tested before, and bounce from that, that 126, rather than the 121 area. So the better trade is obviously the lower zone, better price. But you take what you can get, look for bullishness, intraday even, might even look for some buying opportunities, just day trading this on the long side. But since we have a little divergence, notice price moving up, indicator moving down, suggests we get a pullback first before we rally. That rally may be kicked off by the earnings. So be careful, you don't necessarily want to be in this before the earnings, but the earnings might be the catalyst to drive us into demand before we bounce. Next, I have RSG. Republic Services, and why am I not seeing the, there it is, the seasonal move 90% of the time, this goes up about 2.68% from 17th of May, April till 6th of May. See the dates up there? So looking for bullishness, and on this chart, if we can buy on a pullback to 135, looking at target 140.46, pretty much the second test of that uh, supply zone, and then there's an origin of selling pressure here, we want to get out at about 144.57. And then finally, I have UNH, which is going to also help the Dow rally quite a bit. 90% of the time from the next month, for the next month, April 17th to May 17th, there's been a rally of over 1.5%. So not a huge rally, but still a rally nonetheless that we're expecting here in UNH. And of course, taking the Dow up with it. We just bounced off of a supply zone. So we should be able to break that on the next test. If we pull back, I'm looking to buy 496.20, 491. With the demand zone below that, I'm on the four hour time frame. And then I've got projections for my targets at 539 and 565. So that's what I got for you guys this week. If you got any questions, please hit me up with an email or securities you'd like me to talk about. Please let me know. BrandonWendell.cmt at gmail.com. You can also find me at TraderBDub on Twitter. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that like and subscribe, that way you can stay in touch with everything that's going on here and get the alerts as well. Uh, I want to thank you for listening and talk to you soon. Trade safe, trade well. Take care, everyone.